How do websites detect multiple accounts? This is a question you might be asking if you're an affiliate marketer or if you're a dropshipper, or maybe you're working in a completely different industry and you're managing multiple accounts and you're asking yourself, how do websites are able to detect my multiple accounts? Now, in this video, we're gonna discover the most popular and common methods that websites deploy in understanding that if you are the same person running these accounts. We have a lot of things to discover, so let's begin. The very first way how websites can detect that you're running multiple accounts is by using cookies. Now, cookies are essentially files that the websites can place on your PC. Cookies are also the reason why when you open a Facebook account, for example, and your account is automatically logged in. And the thing is, is that if you log out from this account, the cookies of your previous account will still be on your computer. And as you can see, the Facebook cookies are still here. And if I'm going to use this uh, browser to log in with the second account, the website will be able to see these cookies and know that you're the same person who was running the original account. So one of the things that you can do is you can clear these cookies or you can also uh, use a solution that holds the cookies of your accounts in isolated containers, which is also, by the way, multi-login. You can learn more about multi-login in our other videos on this channel. However, here's the thing. Even if you clear these cookies or if you manage them in separate containers, websites still can detect you by using your IP address. Now, essentially, an IP address is an address, it's a list of digits that is given to you by your internet service provider that you can use to connect to the web. Your IP address can serve as a unique identifier. Now, as you can see here, this is my IP address. It starts with 45 and ends with 84. If I connect to any website from the same IP address, the website will be able to understand that I am the same person. Now, here's the thing. Also, IP address can give additional information about you. For example, it can say, tell the location. The location of this IP address is in Czech. Uh, I'm not really in Czech right now, but it does show the location. We'll cover this a bit later. And uh, it can also show the approximate city or the exact city where this IP address is located. And it can also tell me the name of the internet service provider that this IP address belongs to. And here's the thing, this can be used to identify you and if you are uh, like logging into the second account from the same IP address, websites can easily detect that. However, here's the thing, the fact that you're using a VPN or a proxy can also be used by websites to understand that you're hiding something and that can be the reason why your multiple accounts can get banned and restricted. For example, on this browser, I'm actually using a proxy from Czech Republic. And as you can see, this is my proxy right here. And the way how websites can understand that I'm using a proxy is by checking the internet service provider. And as you can see, the internet service provider of this IP address is Lease Web Netherlands. The thing is, is that this is a data center. This is not an internet service provider, like for example, Verizon or AT&T and so on. So this is one of the ways how websites can understand that you're using a proxy. And if you're using a proxy, this means that you're hiding something and websites can easily detect that. Another way is that they can run your IP address through an external database. And if other services have spotted something suspicious about that IP address, they can essentially mark this as a suspicious IP address or even a proxy. For example, I'm going to go to a pixelscan.net website. And as you can see, this IP address is marked as anonymous network and hosting provider, which means it is spotted being a proxy. Now, in this situation, you have to use good quality proxies, or you can also use cheaper alternatives, which we cover on this channel. But the thing is that the quality of your IP address is something that you have to take care. You will not be able to go away with a simple VPN or a cheap proxy. Even if you find a really good proxy solution, websites will still be able to identify you by using browser fingerprints. Now, there is nothing to be scared about when I talk about browser fingerprints. Browser fingerprints are simply parameters about your browser or your machine or your PC. And they reveal information 
about you. Now, for example, if we check uh, this website, browserleaks.com slash JavaScript, we can see a couple of browser fingerprints that websites can see from our browsers. Now, for example, uh, the website is able to identify the user agent and user agent is a browser fingerprint that consists of the name of your operating system, the version of your operating system. It can also show the type of browser I'm using and the version of this browser. If we scroll up, we can also see that websites can see our screen resolution. Also, browser fingerprints can reveal the location of your machine. For example, using browser fingerprints, websites are able to understand what is your time zone. And here you can see that my time zone is Central European summertime. Here's the thing, you can actually change your browser fingerprints using multiple tools. There's a free tool called User Agent Switcher, which is a Chrome extension, and you can also go ahead and install it and try it yourself. And with this extension, I can supposedly change my user agent. And let's do it. I'm gonna click on the extension and, for example, select to emulate an Android device. I'm gonna select an Android device and the extension has loaded and it looks like we are now masking our browser fingerprints. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Let's reload the page. And yes, as you can see, the browserleaks.com website is able to perceive our new user agent. But here's the thing. If you change one browser fingerprint, it should also be consistent with other parameters that reveal information about your operating system, for example. So if I'm going to change this user agent, there are some consistency checks that websites can deploy in order to understand whether this user agent is correct. Uh, for example, I did change the user agent. However, if we go and check other parameters, there is this parameter which is called Sec sh. This is basically a browser fingerprint called client hints, and they say that my platform is Windows. So, but my user agent is Android, and as a result, block or restrict your account. Now, this is a a very simple example of the algorithms that websites can deploy. In reality, they are usually much more sophisticated and more in depth. We talk about these methods in other videos on our channel. Now, please be warned, if you are using a virtual machine or a VPS, which is a virtual private server, then you should know that websites are able to detect that you are using a virtual machine or a VPS. And they can detect that by using multiple different methods. One of them is being that they are able to detect remote connection software installed on your computer, such as TeamViewer or remote desktop connection. And they can also check different irregularities that typically happen on VPSs or virtual machines. We talk about this in depth in other videos, but please be warned that websites can detect them. One of the ways how you can properly and consistently change your browser fingerprints is by using multi-login. However, the thing is, is that even if you mask your fingerprints today with all consistency checks in place, there is still one thing you should know. And that is that websites are also able to track you and track your accounts by using behavioral analysis. When we talk about behavior analysis, this becomes a very complicated and broad topic. So here I'm gonna just simply go over a couple of things, a couple of methods that websites use to detect you. Now, obviously, if you are managing these multiple accounts, you have to ensure that these accounts have totally different details, different payment methods and unique emails and so on. The thing is, is that also freshly created accounts are always under the radar of detection system, simply because when you're creating a new account, it's not aged, it doesn't have any uh, historical data to prove that it's a good standing account. So you have to be aware of the fact that when you're creating a new account, detection systems will actually place a higher risk on these accounts. And this is the reason why with newly created accounts, you have to take it... Yes, you, you need to take time to warm these accounts up before you do any specific activities such as running ads, selling or buying or so on. Because this will trigger the systems if you just go straight to your goal and do your desired actions. Now, the thing is, is that the way how you can warm up these accounts is always subject to time. And it depends on the season. It depends on uh, whether the website has updated their algorithms or not. 
The best way how you can be up to date with the latest trends and latest methods is to actually watch our podcasts and videos where we talk about these methods and what's in trend today. Due to whole complexity of newly created account and their associated risk scores, we actually advise you on using accounts of your family and friends. And the reason behind that is because these accounts are already aged, they have a lot of behavioral data in them, and as a result, websites will trust them more. If by any chance, if you don't have any family and friends, and I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, then what you can do is you can uh, look into renting or purchasing these accounts. However, I do have to warn you that you will have to do your own due diligence on the validity, on the quality of the seller, because some account sellers are good and some of them, well, let's say they are not better than freshly created ones. And our final topic related to behavioral analysis is cookie history. Now, Here's the thing that you need to know about this. This is a very short explanation. Now, big websites, to a certain extent, can track your browser history or your previous interactions with it. Now, for example, Google knows the majority of websites you have visited, even if you don't have a Gmail account. This is due to their widespread of Google Analytics. In the same way, Google also knows your Google search history, even if you don't have a Gmail account. And the way that they can do that is by using cookies. Amazon likely doesn't know which websites you have crawled before you go to create an account. However, it does know if you have previously interacted with Amazon.com. If you have placed maybe uh, some protein powder in the cart and now Amazon knows that you're a gym junkie. In the end, websites likely will trust you more if you have this history before logging in or registering a new account. So that is why it is advised you farm this history before you commit to logging in or creating a new account. Finally, there are two other behavioral things that websites can use to detect you. One of them being is that websites are actually able to build your profile based on how you type and how you move your mouse. And there are many services that actually claim that they can detect users to a 99.9% .9 accuracy. However, in our research and experience, we find that it's actually not that easy. However, this is still a topic that you should be aware of and read more about it as the technology progresses. Finally, if you're automating anything with any type of automation tools, if you're using Selenium, Puppeteer, or any other solution that utilizes these libraries, it is also possible for websites to detect different automated actions by analyzing your behavior and also by checking for browser fingerprints that appear as a result of this automation. And that's it. This is a short introduction on how websites can detect your multiple accounts using various different technological methods. If you're interested in learning more how you can avoid being detected in running your multiple accounts, or if you're generally interested in privacy, then you can definitely check out our other YouTube videos and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye-bye.